How do you keep your water clean? How do you keep the green water away, the cloudy water away, the scaling, the bacteria, all that shit? You do it with water chemistry. That's right. Well, part of the way, but water chemistry plays an important role. Whether you're new to pool ownership or you need a refresher, we have you covered. But of course, if we tried to cover everything about pool chemistry in one video, it would be like a three hour movie and I'm not supplying popcorn for everybody, just crazy. And movie theater prices, so we've broken pool chemistry up into smaller little bits, and this bit is all about pH, alkalinity, and calcium hardness. Let's dive in. All right, quick disclaimer, everyone has their own methods when it comes to pool chemistry, but at the end of the day, we all just wanna help you take care of your pool, and we all want your pool to be crystal clear and, and fun to swim in, that's it. The information in this video is based on my own personal experience in the pool industry, and all the research we've done here at swimuniversity.com. And if I missed anything, please leave a comment below to let me know. So first, let's talk about pH. What the f is pH? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So pH is the measure of how acidic or how basic your water is. It's on a scale from zero to 14, where seven is perfectly in the middle. So anything below seven, it means your water is very, very acidic, and anything above seven means your water is basic. In the pool world, we wanna keep your pH between 7.4 and 7.6. Now the reason we even talk about pH is that it plays such an important role when it comes to your sanitizer, specifically chlorine. When your pH is at the perfect level between 7.4 and 7.6, chlorine does its best work. And when you have really acidic water, it can do a lot of damage to your pipes and to your filter system and to, your, to the pool itself. And not to mention when you open your eyes underwater, which some people tend to do, it's gonna burn like hell. When your water is basic or really dry, when you get out of the pool, you're gonna notice that you dry up much faster, which may sound like a good thing, but it really isn't because it can do a lot of damage to your pool, it can do damage to your filter system, and of course, it's not gonna make the chlorine work effectively. So we don't want your pH to be below 7.4, and we really don't want it to be above 7.6. In our world, we want that to be right smack dab in the middle at 7.5 pH. Next, let's talk about alkalinity. Alkalinity is pH's bodyguard. This is how I like to describe it because pH is really volatile. If it rains, if you jump in, if you put a beach ball in your pool, I mean, I'm being drastic here, but pH kind of bounces all over the place. And alkalinity, by adding alkalinity to your pool, it's sort of the pH buffer. And in fact, it is the pH buffer. It stops or it takes the big hits so that your pH doesn't go wonky all over the, the zero to 14 scale. It kind of stays in the middle. The alkalinity takes the brunt of the hit. And so with alkalinity, we recommend that you keep your, your readings between 100 and 150 parts per million of alkalinity. So alkalinity and pH go hand in hand. They work together. Usually if you have low pH, it means you may have low alkalinity and vice versa. If you have high pH, it could mean you have high alkalinity. And when you add chemicals to either increase or decrease the pH or the alkalinity, they're gonna both move at the same time because again, they work together. Now we've kind of discussed pH and alkalinity. Those are the two biggest, most important things when it comes to pool chemistry. If the pH and the alkalinity are in balance and they're, they're, they're between their ideal ranges, then you are in a good spot. So how do we get there? How do we get the pH and the alkalinity to be balanced? I know a lot of people struggle with trying to keep their pool balanced. I know it can be tough, but here's what we're gonna do. The first thing we're gonna do is make sure that you get your water checked. You can use a liquid test kit or some test strips, or you can bring it into your local pool store to get it checked for you. Whichever way you measure or whichever way you test the pool, you wanna know where you stand with your readings. You wanna make sure that your pH, where you, or you wanna make sure you know where your pH is, and you wanna make sure you know where your alkalinity currently is. All right, so let's assume that you get your water checked and the pH and the alkalinity are low. What I would do in this case is I would add just alkalinity increaser or sodium bicarbonate, which is also bacon soda. You add that to the water and you wanna use a chemical dosing chart. If you don't know how much to add, don't just 
add a bunch of baking soda or add a bunch of alkalinity increaser into the water, you need to know how much you need to increase by N. If you want to have chemical dosing charts, you can go to swimuniversity.com or you can check out our pool care handbook, which has all of the dosing charts in it for all of the chemicals we're going to talk about. So now that you know how much you need to increase by, and let's say your alkalinity is sitting at about 50 parts per million and we want to get it up to about 125 parts per million, you want to add 75 parts per million. And so depending on how many gallons your water is, which is something that's incredibly important to know beforehand, based on how many gallons you have, you'll know how many pounds or how many ounces or whatever you need to know in order to increase the alkalinity in your pool. When you increase the alkalinity to the correct range, which I recommend being at 125 parts per million, it is going to bring the pH up with it. And hopefully it'll bring up the pH in the correct range. What you're gonna wanna do is after you add alkalinity to your water, and the way you add alkalinity to your water is simply by broadcasting it into the water, sprinkling it in, making sure your filter's running so it mixes it in, and then a couple hours later, you wanna check it to make sure that your alkalinity is in the correct range and hopefully your pH is in the correct range as well. Let's say your pH is a little bit low after you add the alkalinity, you can add pH increaser to just increase the pH. You can also use sodium borate to increase pH or it's also known as borax. So in this case, we have the real big tune, which is you wanna tune up the alkalinity with alkalinity increaser or sodium bicarbonate and then you want to fine tune the pH with a, a sodium borate or a pH increaser to get the alkalinity and the pH right in the right level. So what if your pH and alkalinity are too high? This is less common, but if you have a concrete pool, you might experience this, and there's a host of other factors, but basically you wanna add an alkalinity decreaser or a pH decreaser. In this case, I would use something like muriatic acid, which we have an entire video on to lower the alkalinity, or you can use pH decreaser. When you add either of these things, they're gonna bring both of those readings down, both the pH and the alkalinity, and again, once you add this, you wanna know how many gallons your pool is, you wanna know how much you need to decrease by, and when you add it to the water, wait a few hours, get it rechecked, and make sure that you hit your levels. Again, pH and alkalinity are the most crucial parts of pool chemistry. Keeping them balanced means staying on top of it. It means getting your water checked frequently, making sure that the pH and alkalinity are always in range, and yes, things are gonna affect it. We're talking about an outdoor pool here, unless you have an indoor pool, then you have less chances of this happening, but in outdoor pool, we have rain, we have swimmers, we have the environment. All of these things are gonna cause your pH and alkalinity to kinda increase and decrease, as well as adding other pool chemicals like chlorine. So just make sure that the pH and alkalinity are always in balance, and if you do that, that's like 75% of all pool chemistry is just keeping those things in check. All right, finally, I wanna talk about calcium hardness. What is calcium hardness? It is the measurement of how hard or soft your water is. And it's very similar to pH in the sense that having very soft water can cause corrosion on your pool walls, in your filter system, and having very high calcium can cause scaling to the inside of your pipes or your hoses or the pool itself and can cause long-term issues. So it's important to keep the calcium hardness level at an ideal range between 175 and 225 parts per million. And the good news about calcium hardness is it's not as volatile as pH and alkalinity. It's not gonna change drastically with swimmers or with rain or with environmental elements. Usually you add calcium hardness at the beginning of the pool season and it will stay in your pool for the rest of the season. Now, if you use calcium hypochlorite shock, you are adding little bits of calcium into your water all season long. But if you're not gonna use that shock, then just keep an eye on the calcium hardness level. You may not see it go up and down very drastically, but just make sure it's in the 175 to 225 parts per million range. So if you want more information on taking care of your swimming pool, specifically when it comes to water chemistry, when it comes to pH, alkalinity, calcium hardness, chlorine, all of that stuff, you can check out our pool care handbook and video course, which will teach you everything you need to know about taking care of your pool, especially water chemistry. Once you get it, once you buy this, it is constantly updated and you have it for life. 
And because you're watching this video, and thank you so much for watching this video, you're gonna get a discount of 10% off by using the promo code video. Just go to swimmingdiversity.com slash pool-care-handbook to get your copy today. So thank you so much. Appreciate you watching this video. Again, if you have any questions or comments or you think I missed anything in this video, please leave a comment below. And if you want more information on pool and hot tub maintenance, go to swimmingdiversity.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Appreciate it, thank you so much, and as always, happy swimming. Okay.